Let's recall what we wanted to show. We want to find an angle optimal triangulation and we show that every angle optimal triangulation is legal. But we wanted to show that every legal triangulation is also angle optimal. And to do that we want to use the Delaunay triangulation. And now first we want to prove that a triangulation is legal if and only if it is Delaunay. And then from there we can show the angle optimality. For the direction from Delaunay to legal this is quite easy. We can just combine the empty circumcircle property and Thales++. Plus plus. For every triangle the circumcircle is empty. That means that if I take any edge of the triangle and any other side it lies outside the circle so that would give us a smaller angle. The other direction is not so easy. So let's assume we have a legal triangulation that is not Delaunay. Then there has to be some triangle between sides P, Q and R such that the interior of its circumcircle contains a side. So let's look at this triangle and its circumcircle and this point S that lies inside. Now we want to get a contradiction. Or without uh, loss of generality we can just relabel all these uh, sides such that this edge here is the one that S sees inside the circle. So if I want to go to any of these other two edges then I have to go through the edge PQ and we call this the edge E. Now this can of course happen more than once. It could be that there are more than one triangle where the circumcircle is not empty. And we now only want to look at a very specific one, namely we want to look at this triangle with non-empty circumcircle and this point S such that this angle alpha here is maximum. So for all other pairs of triangle and side this angle is smaller. Now I want to look at a different triangle. So we have this edge E, it lies at the triangle PQR, but it also has to lie at a different triangle. And this triangle is between PQ and a different side T. Now the assumption is that the triangle relation we picked is legal. So that means that this edge E has to be legal. And when is this edge legal? Well we had the lemma that told us an edge is illegal if and only if the side S lies inside the circle through these two three points. So since it's legal T has to lie outside of the circle or on its boundary. Now I want to look at the circumcircle of this triangle PQT. This is part of this. And this contains this green part here. That is the part of the circle C, the red one, that lies above the edge E. So the cyan circular segment contains the green circular segment. And we chose S such that it lies in the red circle. In particular it lies in the green circular segment. So that means it also lies in the cyan circular segment. So we have a triangle PQT and we have this side S that lies in its surrounding circle. And now we do the same as before. We again pick the edge of this triangulation that is the closest to S. And this is now the edge E prime between Q and T. If we now look at the angle between T, S and Q, call this the angle beta, this has to be larger than the angle alpha between P, S and Q. To see why this holds, we could argue with a circle around S, Q and P, then P has to lie on the boundary and T has to lie outside. That's, uh, yeah, you can do that, but there's one way to see that a bit easier is if you again look at this cyan circular segment. So we have this part here, we have the edge E that lies inside the circle and we have the point S. And now if we rotate E, we get closer to S and we can rotate, we move the point P until it lies at T. So we get closer and closer and the closer we get to the point the larger the angle becomes. And that means that the angle between T, S and Q has to be larger than the angle between P, S and Q. But the way we chose this triangle and S, we chose it in such a way that this angle alpha is maximum. So there is no other pair of a triangle and a side with a larger angle. But we found a triangle and a side with a larger angle, so we have a contradiction. 
And that means that all this stuff here, that cannot happen. So if you have a legal triangulation, then it also has to be Delaunay. So now we showed that a triangulation is legal if and only if it is Delaunay. We still have to do the step to the angle optimality. Let's first assume that our point set is in general position. And with general position, now we mean something different than earlier. Now we mean that we don't have four points on an empty circle. If we have this, then our Delaunay triangulation is unique. So our Delaunay triangulation is exactly the Delaunay graph. And since we have the equivalence between legal and Delaunay, that means that there is a unique legal triangulation. And then we know that all the angle optimal triangulations are legal by definition. And there exists at least one angle optimal triangulation. There exists exactly one legal triangulation, so it has to be an angle optimal one. So if you are in general position, then the Delaunay graph gives us the unique Delaunay triangulation, which is angle optimal. What if we are not in general position? Then we have these convex holes that can be larger faces in the Delaunay graph if we have many co-circular points. And here we can use Thales++ again. That's something you will do at the homework exercise. And that will tell us that all Delaunay triangulations have exactly the same minimum angle. That doesn't mean yet that it's an angle optimal one. Because only the minimum angle is the same, but later there could be differences. So if we take an arbitrary triangulation of these cells, then we don't have the angle optimal triangulation yet. However, the angle vectors will not differ too much between all these Stylani triangulations. So let's conclude. We have shown that we can find a Trelawney triangulation of an arbitrary point set in order of n log n time. To do that, we compute the Voronoi diagram and the dual, the Delaunay graph, and just fill the holes however we want, and then we get any Delaunay triangulation. And if the points are in general position, then this gives us an angle optimal triangulation also in order of n log n time. If the points are in arbitrary position, then we can maximize the minimum angle in order of n log n time. Again, by just filling the holes in an arbitrary way. And also, that's not something we've shown here, but an angle optimal triangulation for an arbitrary point set can also be computed a bit slower in order of n squared time. And to do that, you compute the Delaunay graph, and then the only thing you have to do is, again, fill the holes. And the holes are completely independent from each other. It doesn't matter how well you fill one hole for the other one. You only locally want to optimize the angle vector for this hole. And this hole is just a bunch of vertices that lie on a common circle. So in particular, they are in convex position. And if we have that, then we can just triangulate it some way and then do our flipping algorithm. Just keep on flipping edges until we get an angle optimal sequence. And if we are in convex position, then we can show that after order of n squared flips, we get to an optimal one and we don't have to continue. So filling each of these holes optimally can be done in order of n squared time. Thank you for listening.